Hi, I'm Tom Johnson. Today we're going to talk about some very common measurements used in the process of orbit determination. So imagine I've got my Earth, I've got my orbit around the Earth, and what I want to do is measure where my satellite is. So I've got my ground station right here, and I, let's say it's a radar, and I send a signal out, bounce it off the satellite, and then the signal comes back. Okay. So range is easy. That's simply what is the distance between my tracking station and the object that I'm trying to track. And so typically we think of that as uh, a distance in terms of either one-way or two-way representation. Because what we typically do if it's a radar is we send a signal out and we record the time that the signal left the, uh, the, the ground station. And it goes up. It hits the spacecraft, it reflects back, and then we get the time it was received. And if we take the difference between the two times, that's the total time that the, uh, that the, the signal took to get there and back. And we can multiply that by the speed of light, and we can calculate the distance there and back to the object. And typically, we, when we talk about range, we think of it as typically a one-way measurement. And so usually, if, if you measure the, the total time delay, then we divide that by two and come up with the one-way range. So range is easy. Um, now, typically what we want to do is, the problem with, that, with just a single range measurement is we don't know what direction it was in. And so what we want to do is try to figure out, well, what, what direction or what angles were we pointing our dish in, at? So if I think about my dish, and, and here's the, the local horizon, so this part right here. Then I have my, my let's say I have my dish, and it's sitting on my building, and Azimuth or elevation is simply if I draw an imaginary line that's perpendicular to my local surface of the earth, then elevation is the angle, and this is just parallel here relative to the, where the antenna is. This is the elevation angle, it's the angle off the local horizon, okay, or the, or the, lo the, the local uh, horizontal frame. So that gets us how, you know, is the antenna looking right, right flat to the surface? Is it looking straight up? Okay. But then we also have to worry about, you know, what is the angle about that straight up and down vector? So if I'm looking down at my site, here's my, here's my site, I'm looking down on it and I've got a dish on it, and my satellite is over in this direction, and this is the, is the north pole, then the azimuth is typically measured as the angle from north to the direction of, that I'm looking. So with two angles and a range, I can now completely describe the orientation of essentially the vector of about where the spacecraft is. Azimuth and elevation give me the, the total direction, the range gives me the length, and I now have a, a, a very useful set of measurements. Uh, and this is typically something you might get from a radar system or a, uh, a larger scale dish that is trying to track uh, a spacecraft, like a typical parabolic dish like you often see in, in, in the pictures in, uh, of, uh, of NASA tracking stations and things like this. Okay. The other measurement that's pretty common is what we call the Doppler, or, or very often uh, synonymous with range rate, which is we take a look at when we send a, a signal up and it's tra transmitting at some frequency, so some, some transmit frequency, when it gets to the spacecraft and reflects back, what we get back is a frequency that's slightly different from our transmit. So we get a Doppler shifted frequency coming back. And that Doppler shifted frequency is just like the, the Doppler effect when like a train is coming at you and you learn about in high school physics where the sound can be deeper or higher pitched depending on what direction the train is going. Is it, is it approaching you? Is it going away from you? Kind of a thing. So it sounds a, a higher pitch when it's, when it's uh, coming at you, and it's a lower pitch when it's leaving. And the same thing's true with our radar signal that we bounced off our spacecraft. And so by measuring the Doppler shift, how much the frequency has changed between the one I sent up and the one I got back, I can now figure out potentially how fast this object is moving, at least as I can view it in the direction towards my spacecraft. The other common measurements that we might get are right ascension and declination which is typically done when I have a, again, I have my Earth here, and I have my, now I'm going to use a telescope, 
And I'm going to look up, and my telescope's got a field of view. And in that field of view are a bunch of stars. And in that field of view is my spacecraft, which happens to look like another dot. But with my telescope looking up at the stars, I know the positions of the stars because astronomers have been cataloging these for many, many hundreds of years. And, and we know essentially what we call the right ascension, the RA, and the declination, the DEC, of each of the stars. And those are the positions of those stars in an inertial coordinate frame. And then I can also, when I see my other dot, which is my spacecraft, I can now essentially triangulate based on the known positions of the stars I do recognize, figure out the coordinates of my, my spacecraft um, relative to the stars, and I can now come up with the, the art right ascension and declination of where my spacecraft is. And it's, in a sense, it's the, uh, very synonymous to azimuth and elevation in the sense that they're both angles and they give me a direction. Unlike my radar scenario where I actually got a range measurement, now I only have a direction. So I don't know how far away this spacecraft is. I just know what direction I'm looking. Thank you.